Lord for for Hail minister to our hearts. And you know, again, I'm I'm in I'm in fear and trembling for for to share the word of God because I guess as always, but um, but child, the word of God is something very precious and is becoming more and more precious to me. And I really I really want to be faithful to the Lord in sharing with Him or sharing with you all from the Lord and from His Word. And so if I'm just going to ask if we can pray, and then from there, then we'll, then we'll go for it. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity to be together. Lord, I thank you for even the testimony that we've just heard. Lord, and for many other testimonies, many other things that you are doing in many lives. Lord, we are grateful that you would reach down, Lord. That you did, Lord. You came, you saved us, Lord. But you didn't just do it as a once-off event in our lives. But Lord, you continue to be at work in our lives. You continue to sustain us by your grace, to keep us by your grace. And Lord, you work in us, Lord. And as we submit to you, Lord, how you continue to take care. And Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for your heart. And we pray, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord that you would speak to us this morning. You have already, Lord. We pray that you would continue. And so we give you all the glory and all the praise. We worship you today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, what a joy. It's Sunday morning, and, um, and the Lord has something special for us today. And I'm just going to, I'm going to read, read, read uh, a few passages of scripture here. And we're going to start and get things kicked off in, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 23. And what the Lord's really placed on my heart is something which is, is quite, quite serious, but, but it's what's, what the Lord's stirring in my heart. And I really want to be faithful to what, what he has placed in and, um, and to trust in him for how he will lead. And so in Jeremiah chapter 23, we're going to kick off in verse 16. And I'll just give you a bit of time to find that. So we read, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. They continually say to those who despise me, The Lord has said, you shall have peace. And to everyone who walks according to the dictates of his own heart, they say, no evil shall come upon you. Another background to this, these passages here, and we see in the ministry of Jeremiah, how he came up against a lot of opposition. He was there with a message of repentance to, to the people of God, to the kings that, he was, that, he, that were in place at the time. And he had a message of repentance because the people had drifted far away from the Lord. And so he came with that message. He came with a message to turn back to the Lord in truth, in reality. And so here we see the Lord speaking very carefully and very seriously. And in verse, if we jump down to verse 21, he says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. And when I read these scriptures, I, I see and I'm, I'm stirred in my heart because I realize in the days that we are living in today, how the Lord is wanting to speak to us, how the Lord is raising up his people to represent him in, at this time. You know, the world around us, and uh, we mentioned that before, but the world is, is bubbling. There's so many things happening within the church world as well as the out, outside the church world. There are many things that are bubbling, many things that are happening. And here we're going to go back to, to verse 16. He says, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. And you see the problem the problem today is when there are, are, are churches, people that come and they speak things that are their own, that are the inventions of man. Speak things that come from the philosophy of man. You know, and that's why we need to come back always to the pure, simple foundation of the gospel. Preaching repentance from sin 
and preaching that we are called as Christians to take up our cross and follow Christ. And you know, when things don't come from the mouth of the Lord, you know, there's, there's so many philosophies of man, there's, the, the, the line is often so fine. And we can take and bring all sorts of different things that can come to tickle the ears. And on verse 17, he says, they continually say to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. Imagine to those that despise the Lord and in despising that perhaps it's not an open despising of the Lord, but in their hearts, they, 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 they're not interested in what the Lord has to say. They're not interested in the, in the truth of the, the word of God. So to those who despise me, they have said, you shall have peace. And see, that's, if you like, that's the responsibility that we have as the people of God. That somewhere we are calling people to repent. We ourselves are called to a life of repentance, but we are calling others to repent. Because you know, when we are in that place where, where this, this world takes a hold of our lives, this world is, is so much a part of our lives, we need to come back to the Lord. And you know, when we, when we try to have a, a Christianity that's where we, we wrapped up in, in cotton wool and everything's okay and it's all about just about the love of God and some understanding in the way that, that man understands things, we can have a very swayed understanding of the things of God and the righteousness of God and the holiness of God. But how God is wanting to bring us back to his truth in line with his truth. And you know, it's a great call to us today. It's a, it's a serious thing that the Lord is wanting to place in our hearts, but somewhere to have that same vision, to have that same direction that Jeremiah himself said. And here it says, to everyone who walks according to the dictates of his own heart, they say, no evil shall come upon you. And you know, how often do we walk according to the dictates of our own hearts? How often do we do things in, 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 with our own will? And that's why I thought it was so, so precious, even as, as Sophia was sharing, you know, saying about her own plans, her own desires, the, own, the, the things that she thought should be, the things that she thought should happen. And she had all her plans there, all the, all the ducks lined up. But all of a sudden, everything changed. <laughs> everything changed. All those ducks that were lined up all of a sudden went all over the place. And you know, that's, that's the thing that God wants to bring. You know, when, when we walk according to the dictates of our own hearts, and yeah, of course, Jeremiah is, is speaking in, in the context that he is, but for, for us today as well as Christians, as people within the church, how often do we walk according to the dictates of our own hearts? How often do we decide things according to our own will, our own plan, our own desires? And I really feel there's a great warning to, for all of us according to the plans that we have, the desires that we have, but how God is wanting to bring us back in line with his will, bring us back in line with what he is wanting to show us, reveal to us in these days. And he says that those who, who go according to the dictates of their own hearts, that these false prophets, they will say, no evil shall come upon you. And it's not that the Lord is wanting to bring evil upon us, but you know, one thing which I've encountered so often, you know, in terms of in, 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 in church leadership and being involved with many churches all over the world and being in touch with many Christians, is people don't want to submit themselves to God's word. People don't want to submit themselves to the will of God. And oftentimes they go and do their own thing. Their own will is so strong and they do their own thing. They say, but why is God asking me to do this? Why do I have to do like this? Why? And there's many questions, why? And we go and we do our own thing. And after we do our own thing, we find that our world comes crumbling down. We find that situations fall upon us. Things happen or otherwise we fall into sin or many things take place. And all of a sudden then, you know, the, the elders or different, different people are called and, and, and come to try and pick up the pieces. And you know, that's somewhere... Our call, we are called to take care of the people of God. But how many things would have been and could have been prevented if only we could sit, submit ourselves to God's word? If only we could submit ourselves to his will? 
but, but often we don't. We want to do our own thing. And you know, God is really wanting to, and even as we heard this morning, God is wanting to win our hearts. He's wanting to win our hearts, draw us nearer to him. For us to really, for the, the love of God to rise up in our hearts. And with, as that love of God rises up in our hearts, a desire for him, that a fear of God would rise up in our hearts. And when we talk about the fear of God, it's, it's knowing and understanding the seriousness of his call on each and every one of our lives. To know that he is holy and righteous and just, and we cannot play games with his call on our lives. We cannot play games with what he is, what he is asking of us as his people. And when I say playing games, I'm, 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 I mean not just doing things the way we want to do and say, well, you know, there's the grace of God is always there. The forgiveness of God is always there. It's not something technical, the grace of God and the forgiveness of God. This is not a technical thing where, okay, well, I can go and do whatever I want, but afterwards I can just ask for forgiveness. And he said that he'll forgive me. So then he can just forgive me. <laughs> it's not how it works. God is not a man that we can play games with or just mess around with. When we fall, when we make mistakes, when we sin, when these things happen, God is faithful because he sees our hearts when we come back to him in repentance. And we come back and he forgives us and he's faithful and just and righteous and he will forgive us. He is all, and he is full of love and he will do so. But let us not try and play around with the Lord and figure out some equation where one plus one equals two. He has to forgive me, so therefore I can do whatever I want, and afterwards I'll ask him to forgive me. <laughs> I'm saying that when we can maybe laugh, but I, <laughs> some people think like that. But we need to know and have a respect and love for the Lord. And because we love him, we don't want to grieve his heart by the things that we do. We want him to be our Father in heaven who look, can look upon us and say, my good and faithful servant. That is my desire, and, and I think that's the desire for all of us, that we want to say, Lord, here I am, ready to do your will, Lord. And you know, even as Jeremiah had this call, but how for, for all of us, God is calling us to serve him. God is calling us to represent him. And um, <clears throat> if we go further down, we're going we're gonna to read in verse 21, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them. Yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they would have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. And how God is calling servants of God to come into his counsel. You know, because the heart of God is to restore his people. The heart of God is to bring his people back to him. Because our hearts are, will forever be, be, be um, tend to stray. That's the, our human nature. That's our flesh. We, we can tend to stray. We can tend to go far from the Lord in our hearts. We do. We, we, we wonder from time to time. I don't know if there's anyone here who can lift up your hands or whatever, but you know, we, we, we tend to wonder in our lives. Has, any, has that ever happened to anyone here? Yes. Amen. You know, I say amen, but you know, it's, it's a sad thing, but it's a reality. It's a true thing. But we wonder, and our God is faithful in his mercy, in his grace to bring us back to him, to restore us. And that's his heart. But how he says here, and the call to, to us, the call to his servants is if they would have stood in my counsel, if they had come. And for me, I just think when I read that, I'm like, what a precious, precious passage you know, it's like God just beckoning us. If we could just come and stand in his counsel, if we could just come, just be in his presence, just hear from him, what would flow out of our hearts? What would flow out of our hearts would be his very heart. And then he says how those prophets, they would have caused my people to hear my words and they would have turned from their evil way. And you see, so that's when we take on the heart of God, we will share the same heart of God for, for people to come back to him, for that repentance to take place. You know, because it's not, it's not just a simple thing, you know. <laughs> repentance is something that's true, that grips our heart, that's deep. 
There's a brokenness that comes to our hearts because we know we've grieved the Lord. But when we take our sin lightly, when we take those things that we can do, when we, when we go off into our own, our own dictates, the own, the, our own things, when we see those things in a light way, then we'll see forgiveness in a light way. We'll see God's forgiveness and we'll diminish God's forgiveness. We'll put a discount onto God's forgiveness. But there's no discount to God's forgiveness. We need to always remember the great, great price that Christ paid for us. The great price that he paid for us in dying on the cross. And that was because of our sin. You know, that's because of your sin today that he did that. He died on the cross. And you see, it's, it's, it's something that happened many, many years ago. But today, we need to remember the price that Christ paid, not only for the sins of that time, but until the time that he returns, he paid for every single one of those. And you know, when we take the forgiveness of God lightly, as it's just something that he should do, or just something that's part of the package, I feel that we, we do a great disservice to the Lord and it reveals so much of our heart for him. And I think we really need to consider that. But here how God is calling on his people, he's calling on his servants in this way here in, his, in, in Jeremiah. But you know, today we have many, many things going on in the world. We have many things going on. We have many things being preached in the world today. And the reason why I want to share this and, and about the perilous times that we are living in is because we see clearly in the word what is taking place. And, you know, there are, are, are many who will say that, that things are, are going to get, get better and better in the world. You know, that there's going to be different things that the Lord's doing. There's going to be a revival and, and the kingdom of God is going to grow and expand and, and that uh, Christians are going to, you know, have greater and greater reach within the world. But unfortunately, we don't see that clear pattern in Scripture. What we see in Scripture is that things are, things are only going to get worse until the return of Christ. But how the Lord is going to protect us by His grace in, in that time, as things do get worse. And as His people, we will shine as a greater and greater light. Because, you know, the darker things get, the greater that light will become. You know, if you go outside and it's a bit of a cloudy day and you have a, a light with you, there's only so much that you can see that light shining. But when you are in a night where there's complete cloud cover, there's no stars, no moon, not anything, and it's pitch, pitch black, and you bring that same light, how that light will seem so much brighter. And how in the days that we are going into, you know, as sin will abound, the grace of God will continue to abound towards his people and towards those to whom he will save. And you know, that light will be shining brighter and brighter in this world. And so while there will be many things that will be taking place, many great challenges, but how God will cause us as his people to shine. And so for us, we need to be aware of these things, aware of the call of God on our lives. We need to be aware of what God is asking of us as his church in these days. Because there are many things that we will see in the world that we are living in, many things that we'll see in the church. But it's important just to, to see, and that's why I felt so strongly to look at a few of these scriptures where, where Paul and uh, Peter are writing to the church about the things that will be to come. And you know, for these men in their days, they, they believed that the return of Christ would be imminent. They did not think that it, I'm sure if you had asked them and you'd said to them, listen, it's going to be over 2000 years until Christ returns. I don't believe that they would have believed you if you had told them that. I'm sure for them, they would have thought that it would, be a, it would have been a lot quicker than that. That's what I feel. But, you know, in the way that they talk and the way that they share, that's what I believe that they thought. And so when we go and look over into 2 Peter chapter 2. And, you know, as we approach these scriptures, I think it's important for us. To approach these things with humility and to approach these things with, with an attitude in our hearts where we are in faith. Because, you know, we can, we can read certain things and we can, when I, when I say humility is because we can read things and say, oh, you know, I'm in a good place. And 
it's crazy what other people are going to do. Therefore, I come sort of from a high place. I come from a place where I think I've got it all together and, oh, that's crazy what other people are going to do. But in reading this, we need to read with all humility, knowing the grace of God on our lives, knowing the grace that God has given to us to understand what we have, to be in the place that we are. And that's why I say we approach it with humility. And, and at the same time as well, without fear and with faith, because in all of these things, God is with us and he is building his church. But we need to be aware. And that's why it's in scripture. So 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. And so here we see, as we've read in, in Jeremiah, uh, we, we know about these false prophets, these, these men that were preaching a, a false gospel. They were preaching a false message and, and telling everyone everything would be fine. While, while Jeremiah was preaching repentance for the people to come back to God, these other prophets were preaching a message saying, you know what, it's all good. Everything is fine. No problem. You know, uh, God is going to prosper the, the nation of Israel, etc., etc. This whole thing about sin, this whole thing about, you know, going your own way and these little idols here and there. It's no problem. You know, God will prosper us. God will take care of us, etc. Jeremiah then came with a very contrary message, very different message. And Jeremiah's message was repent. You've gone far from the Lord. Your hearts have gone far from the Lord. Repent and come back to him. And that's why he received all the the persecution he did. So here Peter takes it up and he says, so it's 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1. But there were also false prophets among the people. Looking back into the Old, Old Testament. Even as there will be false teachers among you. Who will secretly bring in destructive heresies. Even denying the Lord who bought them. And bring on themselves swift swift destruction. And many, many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. And so here we see these, these destructive doctrines that will come in. And he says these things will happen. They will come into play. They will take place in the days to come. And so we need to understand that in the days that we are living in, and if you look around, this is the case to a large degree for many, in many, many places. There are many destructive doctrines. And in verse two, he says, because of whom the way of truth, because of these destructive doctrines and those who are preaching it, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. And if I can say that the Christian world in many ways and Christians in general in many ways have been there's been a slant on the way people see even people in the world the way people see Christianity because of what has taken place because of what has been preached because of what has been done in the name of Christ in the name of Christianity and so that's why God is wanting to bring a purity to his church that's why God is wanting to bring a reality to his church in these days so that we can shine as those lights, we can be that 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 true church that that God is that is represented and represents Jesus, represents the Lord. And you know, we are not perfect people. No one here is perfect. I'm looking at everyone here, and, and I, I can confirm that. No one is perfect, and me being the first. But how God in his refining process, God in his way is 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 building us, he's changing us, he's renewing our minds. And so therefore we need to be serious about his call for each of us. You know, even as, as Mickey, Mickey had shared uh, during the conference time and has been sharing in the, in the different messages, but how God is wanting to continue to bring, bring that foundation of the foundation that is in his word, you know, that foundation of his, of his holiness and the way that he desires for things to be in truth. Because you know, when, when we start to move away further and further from his word, from the things that are in his word, slowly but surely we are influenced by the different things and the, and the ways of thinking in this world today, we can end up going very, very far. We start off just slightly in a different course, and as we go along, we get further and further away. But how God is always wanting to bring us back, and in his grace, he does. And so many things have been blasphemed in the church today. Blasphemed in the sense that 
people in the world look at the church and say, well, look what's being done there. Look what's being preached there. Let's look what's being said here. That's, that's nonsense. But that's why God is calling us to stand for him and rise up today and preach the gospel in truth. And if we look over at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 as well. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. And now he says, now Paul is talking and he says, now the spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. And, you know, their, their consciences, consciences seared with a hot iron. And, you know, when, you, when you're reading these scriptures, it's, it's, it's something we have to be so very aware of. That what is, what is being said, what is being preached, what is being lived. And that's why we need to be very clear with the gospel, within our own hearts, with the reality of the word of God, within our own hearts. Because, you know, the, the enemy is, is wanting to come with his plans to win, win hearts. He is coming with his own strategies to win hearts, to draw people away in his own subtlety, in his own little ways, his own strategies. And you know how we see often that, and we see in, in, in God's word that the, the devil comes as an angel of light. He comes to distract. He comes to, to paint a very pretty picture, things that look good. There's a counterfeit. You know, it reminds me of, of when Moses came before Pharaoh. And he came to, to release the people of God. And it's such an amazing picture, such an amazing image that Moses would let God's people go. That they would come, un, come out from the bondage of slavery, come out from all that, that they had in that time of slavery. God loved his people and wanted them to be a free people to follow after him, to be a free people to, to follow all that he had for them. And so Moses came and he said to Pharaoh, let my people go. He spoke on behalf of the Lord. And so he came and he did signs and, and wonders that the Lord gave to him. And I remember even as a little kid, you know, seeing these different stories and, and you know, how Moses threw his staff down and it turned into a snake. But we see also then the, those magicians of Pharaoh and how they came as well with their, their own staffs, their own sticks, and they threw them down and they also turned into snakes. And for us to be aware and to know that in the days that we are living in, the enemy also will, will try and bring these different counterfeits, will bring different things somewhere to look like a, a form of, of, of something to distract us. A form to say, you know, as the magicians of Pharaoh did, they said, well, okay, that's fine. You know, wonderful. Well done, uh, Moses. You know, clap, clap. Huh? Good for you. Huh? Good man. Um, you've made a, you've, you've turned your stick into a snake. Well, let's just show you. And we can also do the same. And so they did their little magic things and, you know, led by, led by the, by devils, demons, whatever, you know, their, their magic, their sorcery. And they did the same thing. And, uh, you know, God in his, in his way just proved his authority and, and Moses, the snake came and just gobbled theirs up, um, you know, but, but our God will always win. And we see that. Um, but how we need to be careful, you know, because the devil will always come with a counterfeit. And also, and when we're talking about the will of God, even as Sophia had shared, you know, we talk about God's will for us as Christians. God will come with his will, his plan. And the devil will always come with a little counterfeit offer. He'll always come with a little side, side offer, a little side plan, a little plan B or C or D or, or perhaps a plan C to Z. Um, or if you're American, C to Z. Um, but, or if, you know, Sophia understands. But... <clears throat> But, you know, it's the, the enemy will always come with his, his different, different options. But we need to be clear with the gospel. We need to be clear with God's word. We need to be clear with what he's asking of us. Otherwise, we can go in many different directions. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, as, as, as leaders in the church, you know, we, we get asked questions. Okay, but in my life, do I have to do this? Do I have to do that? Why should I have to do this? Okay, but if there's this little thing happened, then, you know, what do I need to do? And, 
And oftentimes people, you know, things, situations get very complicated. <laughs> and, you know, there are many times where we have to just say, let's just, let's just go before the Lord and ask the Lord. But what I find and what the Lord's been showing me is sometimes we don't always have to have an answer. Sometimes we just need to come before God and just say, Lord, here is my life. Show me. And we just take it one day at a time. Because we, as a people, we so much love to figure things out. You know, I, I see people, you know, there's people in front of me that are very, very intelligent people. And, you know, there's some that I know are very, you know, calculated and organized, very good at organizing. But how we need to be so careful that we are not just trying to figure things out. Okay, fine. Let's sit down. Let's discuss. Now, if this happens and then that happens, how do we do this? How do we do that? Sometimes we just need to come. Come into God's counsel. Come into his presence and seek him. Ask him, Lord, what is it that you're asking of me? And you know, we all have a part to play, a great part to play in what, what the Lord is wanting to do. And as we read these scriptures, as we see what's often what's taking place around us, you know, we see that it's a, it's a serious call. And, you know, as for us to be aware of that, but, you know, it's, it's not about painting a bad picture of, of all that's happening around us. Not paint, painting a bad picture of oh, this church is not right, that church is not right, etc., etc. But what we do need to do is, this is what scripture says, and this is where the Lord is wanting to keep us and hold us. And that is what God is asking of our lives. Because otherwise, when we stray off that foundation, we can go very far. And I want to just read in Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 1. Verse 21. You know, here Jesus has just been talking about knowing people by their fruits. And he says about... In verse 15, beware of false prophets who come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. I won't go all through that, but I think it's very, again, just keeping in, 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 in line with what Peter has shared, in line with what Paul has shared. And here as well we see. And there are many scriptures we could look at. But here Jesus himself, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. And then further down in verse 21, Jesus said, not everyone who said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Oof. Those are very, very strong words. Very, very strong words. Words of Jesus. And you know, I don't, I don't know and I can't tell you exactly, you know, the exact situation or, or, or what it will be, those people who one day God would, would say that to. But what we do see clearly here, and even as we read the verses earlier, that a good tree will not bear bad fruit and a bad tree will not bear good fruit. And you know, with the reality that we are living within our lives, there's fruits that God will manifest. And so therefore, it's not just about, oh, I prophesied, or oh, I did this, or oh, I did that. But somewhere the reality of our lives and what we are living needs to be made manifest. And it will be fruits that people will see, fruits that people will see, will see and feel and all of that. And so we need to be aware. We need to stand firmly on the foundation that God himself has given to us. But I, I, just, I just see so much. I see so much of, of what, is, what is taking place around. And, and again, I'm, I'm so convinced that more and more we need to be a people that are discerning in the spirit. A people that are based and found in the word of God. And my brothers, my sisters, I want to encourage you, please, today, that you find yourself 
seeking God in his word. And you know, even Prim had mentioned about, about the, the different prayer meetings and things that we have. And I want to encourage you, whether if you are able to come, if you are not able to come, of course, there's absolutely no problem. But if you're able to make it, you're welcome to come and join us and we seek the Lord together. But even as you said, if when in those times in your home, if there's a few people, you know, it's always great to pray on our own, to have that time where we get a little bit, go a little bit further intimately with the Lord and ourselves, where we go one side, but also to, pr to pray perhaps with our households, as, as couples, as families, whatever the case may be, but to seek the Lord and to be those people that, are, that go seeking for the Lord in his word, to be those people that are seeking him in prayer, going before the Lord, going into his counsel, going to hear from him. Because there are many questions that we can ask of others, many questions that we may have that can be answered like that when we go into the presence of the Lord. Many questions that we can, that we, the Lord can bring us clarity. The Lord can bring us revelation as we look into his word. There might even be a scripture that we've read a hundred times, but in the time of God and by the help of his Holy Spirit, he can show us something and reveal something to us as we read his word. And that is the power of God. And that is the reality of his Holy Spirit that dwells amongst us and is at work in us. And so let us be that people that is seeking for him, that is seeking for him in truth. And I'm just so, I'm so blessed when I feel the heart of God for myself because I know that nothing good dwells in me. Mahari works with me. He can tell you nothing good dwells in Dan. He can tell you that. I won't say the same thing for him because I'm sure his wife's listening as well. So, but, but she will, she will probably testify to that too. But, we, you know, we, we, we know that nothing good dwells in us. And we know the righteousness and the goodness of God in us. And that's why even if we read in, in, uh, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. Now, there's, there's so many scriptures we can look at. But just quickly, 1 Peter, um, 1 Peter 1, 15. We um, just hear yeah, Peter encourages us and he says, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on the father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout your, throughout the time of your stay, as pilgrims here on this earth in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And that's why we had the fear of God. That's why he says, carry out, carry out your time here with fear. Does he mean fear from what we see on the media? Does he mean fear from uh, what could maybe happen to us or fear of losing our job or fear of this or fear of that. That's not the fear he's talking about. He's talking about the fear of God. And we know also the word of God tells us that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And so therefore we need to be a people that, that, that are so aware and are so um, understanding of the fear of God that he wants to bring to our lives. And so we, we know that we are not, we're not purchased with gold or silver. Eh? We're not redeemed with gold or silver. You know, no one, no one came and said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come and take Dan out of the world. He has, he has 100 pounds. No one said that. It was Jesus who came and shed his own blood for me to change me because I was not good. And he came and gave me his grace and saved me because of his grace. And because he had a plan for me. And so God is calling us today to stand firm for him, to stand and to be holy as we, as we reach out, to be holy as he is holy. And I really want to, um, sorry, I'm just going to have another sip. I want to encourage us today. You know, we, there is, even as we reach here, be holy as I am holy. That's what the Lord says. Even as we read that, I believe that there are many people that have, that carry a lot of burdens on their shoulders. There are many people that carry condemnation on them because of things of the past. 
And even when we hear the truth of God's word, there are people that can, you know, and, and I say people, us, that can, that can carry those things in some way that can feel condemned. You know, even Howard shared earlier about, about one of the pastors, Matt, uh, Mark, who is, who is sharing the truth of God's word. And he felt like, the, I can never attain that. I can never get there. I, I, it's, that's, it's just too much. But how? We need to be very aware of the grace of God. We need to be very aware of the forgiveness of God, the power of it, that Christ did not just die just like that, but it's very, very powerful. And so God is wanting to set us free from all those things of the past because there are, there are things that we can actually hold on to. There are things that we can, we, we kind of drag along with us, but our God is wanting to set us completely free because in us being holy, we need to understand, and that's why I said, no one is good, not one. Because when we understand the wretchedness, and even as Paul shared about his own wretchedness in, in Romans chapter 7, when we understand our wretchedness, we can understand the power of the forgiveness and the grace of God. And so therefore, it doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter what has taken place. But what is the, your attitude towards your sin today? Because many of us have a lot of baggage in the past. I have a lot of baggage from the past. But I thank Jesus that he has set me free from that. He has released me from all of that. And that's why I want to encourage all of you. That even as we, as we talk about the righteousness of God, we talk about the holiness of God. It's not to put a pressure on anybody. It's not about any condemnation, condemnation on anybody, anybody. But it's for us to realize the power of God to actually change us. And that's the amazing miracle. And that's when we try and just talk about the love of God in some airy fairy way and okay, God loves you and it's okay. What you've done is it's sort of okay. And don't worry, you know, God's love covers all and blah, 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 blah. It's a lot of nonsense. God brings us to repentance because we see the vileness and the wretchedness of our sin and we repent with a broken heart. That's when the freedom comes. It's not when everything's just, okay, you know, an airy fairy. I don't know where that airy fairy came from, but that's just the, the words that felt best to say at the time. But it's, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a seriousness that, we, seriousness that we have towards our sin, but God sets us absolutely free. It's like that complete cut from all of those things. And even when things come again in the future, when, thing, when more things come, because we can say, oh, I'm free from the things of the past, but when more things come, what happens? What is our attitude towards those things? What is our attitude towards sin? And that's why it's important that we hear the gospel. That's why it's important to hear the, the true, pure gospel. Because when I'm decided to take up my cross and follow Christ Jesus, when I'm decided that I want to live a life that is holy before the Lord, when things come, I'm not crushed by it. I'm not condemned by it. But I just know that I'm a wretched man. <laughs> I know. If Paul says it, I can say it. I'm a wretched man. And I'm not just like, what is going on? Why are these thoughts come to my mind? Why has this situation happened? What is going on now? I thought I was free from that. I don't know if ever that's ever happened to you guys, you know? There's been times, I've, and I'll be honest with you, there's been times I've, I've been a little doing the shopping and I've looked, I've seen a bottle of whiskey and, and something has just come back to me, a memory of when I used to, when I was an alcoholic. And just something just comes back. I'm being honest with you guys. You know, and it's like, and I'm like, what is going on? You know, I mean, how, when is the last time, you know, that I was drinking and alcoholic and all that? So long ago. And you know, there's things, and it's just a little example. They can be all sorts of things. Relationships we had in the past, things that took place. Things can come back and then we can... We can get into a place where we say, what is going on? Why? Why am I having these feelings? Why is this? And we just say, as Paul said, a wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? The things that I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I end up doing. Who will deliver me? Who will save me? What is going on? But that's where the gospel comes back. That's where the truth of God's word comes back. Not, yes, you are an amazing person. Yes, the Lord has such a great destiny for you. Yes, you are designed for greatness. Yes, no. 
you are wretched. <laughs> but the good news, the gospel, is that Jesus Christ came to set you free. His grace is there for you. His forgiveness is there for, for you because you are wretched and because you recognize you are wretched and we come to him with a broken heart. And we say, Lord, please deliver me, Lord Jesus. That's the gospel. And that's the power of the gospel. And that's where we need to recognize who we are before him. Because unless we recognize who we are before him, we will go around in circles as the people did in Israel going around in the desert, the people of Israel in the desert. We'll be going around and around and we're looking back at the leaks. We're looking back at the things, oh, you know, the past was actually not so bad. And, you know, God wants us to be free people. And that's my call to us today. You know, we're looking at what's taking place in the, in, in the world around us and what we see in the word in the days to come and that there will be perversion of the gospel. There will be false gospels, false messages, false prophets, false teachers that will be there. But God wants us to be there surrounded, knowing what his truth is, knowing what his gospel is for us to be more and more free to serve him and to proclaim his truth. Because the more that it's a reality in our lives, the more we can proclaim it to others and others will feel that and see that because the fruits will be there in our lives. We're not just there to tell people what to do. We're not just there to tell people, this is a good thing. It's great to be a Christian. It needs to be those fruits in our lives that people feel. And even if, even if sometimes I, I don't always have the words, no problem. Because God is at work in the Spirit. And when we give our lives for Him, give our lives for His kingdom, there's things taking place in the spiritual realm. Because God is at work. And I really want to encourage us with that. You know, we can have our plans. We can have our things that we think are good to do. But ultimately, it's the Lord who will lead us and guide us. And it's the greatest deception from the enemy. You know, that we think our own plans are the best plans. And if somewhere we are honest with ourselves, we all have our, the plans and the things we think are best. But our God is calling us to submit to him. And when we submit to him, we are protected. When you submit to him, we are well. You know, the Bible even tells us to submit to God. That's the first thing. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Does it just say submit, uh, resist the devil and he will flee from you? It says submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And so we need to be clear in our hearts. God is wanting to build us up as his people. Because truly we are living in perilous times. <laughs> it's not for us to fear but we need to know that God is calling us and you know as leaders God is calling leaders to be watchmen for his church but also God is calling each and every one of us brothers sisters in the church he's calling all of us somewhere that have received the gospel all of us to be watchmen in these days that we are living in let us stand for the gospel my brothers and sisters let us stand for the gospel. Let us stand for his truth. Let us know what that truth is in our lives. Let him set us free. He desires to set us free. And so the Lord is so faithful. The Lord is so good. And he is taking us onto many, many things. And I'm, I'm, I'm so sure in my heart that he's going to be raising up people in these days to stand for his truth. You know, there's, you, we hear about, uh, you know, just following things that are happening around in the world. There are, there are men of God that are standing for the truth of the Lord and are coming up against great opposition. Let me tell you, great opposition. And when we stand for God's word, we will come up against great opposition. And, you know, I was just chatting with, I was chatting with, chatting with Tim the other day and we were just saying that, <clears throat> It's amazing because there's so much acceptance in this world that we're living in today. You know, in a liberal society, it's like there's, there's so much acceptance for everybody. Everybody has a place. There's acceptance for everybody. But the moment we stand for the truth, it's in God's word. There'll be no acceptance for us. Let me tell you that. I want it to be clear for each and every one of us. There's no, will be no acceptance from this world because Jesus himself, as I think I shared a couple of weeks ago, that because we are not of this world. The world will hate us because we are not greater than Jesus and this world hated Jesus. 
And so when we stand for the truth of God's word, the world will hate us and will oppose us. But the, re- the thing we can rejoice in is that Jesus said that he has overcome this world. And so let us really persevere in that because he's called us to be free people, people that are free of this world, people that are free of sin. It comes, these things happen, but there's repentance for us, there's forgiveness for us, and we walk on that road. And so I trust that we can be encouraged today. And we, there's, there's a challenge to our lives, but there's an encouragement. Thank you, Patricia. There's an encouragement to our lives because God is calling us. Let none of us think that God is, is not calling them. Let none of us think, I'm just here, you know, just to sit and be part of the church. No, God is calling us. And that's why even in prayer, there's so much God can do through us and, and use us in, in prayer. So let's trust the Lord. Anyways, we love you. And we are all part of building the kingdom of God. There's many things that God is, is, is planning up ahead. And so we trust him for every step of the way. Every week that we go, uh, we need God's grace. Even as Prim said earlier, we need God's manna. Because every day will carry its own challenges. But we, we love you all. And um, I'm just going to close. And I'll just, I'll just pray quickly. And we'll just close up. And I think perhaps we can just have a bit of time just to to greet one another and to say goodbye. But Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time together. Lord, I pray that you would continue to bring a greater and greater freedom to each and every one of us. Lord, that we would be free and convinced and convicted, Lord, about your gospel. Lord, convicted about your word, Lord, and building that relationship with you. To seek you, Lord, where you may be found, Lord. Seek you in your word and prayer. Seek you, Lord, in the giving of our lives. But that we may be determined in that. Lord, that you may help us. Lord, reveal yourself to us, Lord. Bring greater revelation of yourself to our hearts, Lord Jesus, as we seek you. <coughs> Lord, we love you. And we want to give you our lives, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for this time that we've had. And I pray that you would touch each and every one of us. Bring your heart to each and every one of us, Lord, as we continue to serve you. We love you, Jesus. And because we love you, Lord, we love one another. And we want to give our lives for one another. We thank you today for this time that we've been able to have. And we give you all the glory, Jesus. What can we give back to you, Lord, that you haven't already given to us? You have given us life. You have given us breath. You have saved us. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless. And thank you to everybody. And we trust the Lord for what he has ahead. We love you guys.